Hi everyone, welcome back to the Intelligent Research Channel. Several subscribers asked me to analyze Charles Schwab's stock to see if it's a safe stock to invest in over the long run. As you may already know, Charles Schwab's stock is down a lot this year because of the current banking crisis. For example, at the time of making this video, the Investco Bank ETF is down almost 30% compared to one year ago. During the same period, Charles Schwab's stock is down almost 39%. In comparison, the S&P 500 is down almost 6% compared to one year ago. In the past five years, so you can see Charles Schwab stock did underperform the S&P function substantially, mainly because of this banking crisis that is affecting all banking stocks. And in the past 10 years, you can see Charles Schwab stock did outperform the S&P function by a reasonable margin. But you can also see Charles Schwab stock is much more volatile compared to the S&P 500. This usually suggests that Charles Schwab has high risk compared to the S&P 500, even though it did outperform the S&P 500 in the past 10 years. Of course, past return does not guarantee future results. If you want to invest in Charles Schwab, I think it's very important to understand Charles Schwab's current biggest risk, the current banking crisis, its balance sheet, and its long-term prospects. For example, at the time of making this video, Charles Schwab's biggest risk is deposit risk or liquidity risk. Investors are concerned that Charles Schwab is losing a lot of deposits because their customers are moving their cash deposits to money market funds that pay much higher yields. Charles Schwab's business model is largely dependent on the amount of short-term cash in customers' brokerage accounts. Charles Schwab uses most of his customers' cash to invest in many short-term and long-term government debt securities to earn interest income. Charles Schwab may run into liquidity problems if they they don't have enough cash on hand. Also, Charles Schwab's cost of funds will likely increase a lot going forward, which will decrease Charles Schwab's net interest margin and earnings per share. So in this video, I'm going to talk about these topics to see if Charles Schwab is safe for long-term investing. I will talk about Charles Schwab's biggest risk and accounting red flags. Charles Schwab's long-term prospects. Is Charles Schwab's stock undervalued now? And will I buy Charles Schwab's stock? If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will come continue to make many excellent stock analysis and investing videos every week that will help you become a great investor. Each video usually takes me 20 to 30 hours to make, so if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description. Our goal is to help all members grow their stock portfolios to over 7 figures over time. Once you become a Patreon member, you can follow all the stocks I'm investing in for the long term, and download the latest intrinsic value calculators for all the stocks I'm analyzing, so you will know when a stock becomes undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued now. Also, you will have access to all my latest stock ratings for all the stocks I'm analyzing. The link is in the video description. Take a look, let's start. Before talking about Charles Schwab's long-term prospects and whether Charles Schwab's stock is undervalued now, I want to talk about Charles Schwab's biggest risk right now. Charles Schwab's biggest risks are deposit or liquidity risk, interest rate risk, and credit risk. So here's the elephant in the room that's affecting Charles Schwab the most. Charles Schwab's customers are moving a large amount of money from their bank accounts or brokerage accounts to buy money market funds. This is because money market funds are paying higher yields than most bank accounts and brokerage accounts. Also, money market funds have much less risk compared to stocks and long-term bonds. When the market is down a lot or when the market has a lot of uncertainties, many investors like to park their money in money market funds, especially if they're paying much higher yields than most bank accounts. Here's an example. If you park your money in Charles Schwab's savings account, you will only earn about 0.48% of interest. But if you buy Charles Schwab's money market funds, you will earn up to 4.83% yield. Of course, these yields fluctuate. This is why you can see Charles Schwab's customers have been withdrawing money from their bank deposit accounts to buy more money market funds that pay much higher yields. The positive thing is this. Based on my understanding, these customers are not leaving Charles Schwab. Most of them are only withdrawing money money from their bank deposit accounts with Charles Schwab to buy more money market funds that pay much higher yields. I believe this trend will continue as long as money market funds yields are much higher than bank accounts yields. The downside is this, Charles Schwab's cost of funds will increase going forward, which will likely decrease Charles Schwab's net interest margin. At the time of making this video, the US Fed's interest rate is between 4.75% and 5%. In the next Fed meeting, the Fed is expected to increase its interest rate to by another 0.25% to 5.25%. Then the Fed is planning to keep its high interest rate there for a while until the US inflation drops back to the 2% target. The Fed is not planning to cut interest rates anytime soon in 2023. This means money market funds yields will remain high for a while, at least throughout 2023. Money market funds yields will decrease when the Fed starts cutting interest rates. 
Charles Schwab's biggest risk is the deposit or liquidity risk right now. In a recent interview with the Wall Street Journal, Charles Schwab's CEO said this to calm investors and customers. He said, There would be a sufficient amount of liquidity right there to cover if 100% of our bank's deposits ran off, without having to sell a single security. The company could engage in a number of strategies to plug any funding shortfall, including collecting interest paid on bonds it owns, borrowing from the Federal Home Loan Bank and issuing certificates of deposit. Obviously, Charles Schwab's CEO was trying to calm investors and customers by stating that the company does have enough cash flow and external financing that can cover 100% of the bank's deposit. Before showing you whether Charles Schwab has enough liquidity to meet customer deposit withdrawals, I want to share with you Charles Schwab's financials here and its business model. At the time of making this video, Charles was Q1 earnings are not over yet, so I can only show you the 2022 financials. Here you can see net interest revenue contributes more than 50% of Charles Schwab's total net revenues. The rest revenues are the asset management and admin fees, trading revenue, and bank deposit account fees. When interest rates are high, Charles Schwab would benefit the most because Charles Schwab would earn higher interest revenues from investments and loans. And when interest rates are low, Charles Schwab would earn much lower interest revenues from investments and loans. At the same time, Charles Schwab needs to keep the cost of funds as low as possible in order to earn higher net interest revenue each quarter. Net interest revenue is the difference between interest generated on interest earning assets and interest paid on funding sources. Swap's primary funding source for interest earning assets is uninvested client cash balances held on a balance sheet as part of client's overall relationship with the company. Swap's interest earning assets are primarily comprised of high quality fixed income securities, margin loans, and bank loans. Going back to Charles Swap's liquidity risk, management said that the company has enough liquidity to meet all deposit withdrawals without needing to sell its bond portfolios. Management said this, more than 80% of our total bank deposits fall within the FDIC insurance limits. As a reminder, our deposit base is primarily comprised of transactional cash balances swept to our banks from one of our 34 million brokerage accounts. We have access to significant liquidity, including an estimated 100 billion of cash flow from cash on hand, portfolio related cash flows, and net new assets we anticipate realizing over the next 12 months. Months. We believe we have upwards of 8 billion in potential retail CD issuances per month, plus over 300 billion of incremental capacity with the Federal Home Loan Bank and other short term facilities, including the recently announced bank term funding program. As a reference, Charles Swap had 367 billion of deposits at the end of 2022. Bank deposits are considered liabilities for Charles Schwab because these deposits belong to customers. Charles Schwab uses customers' deposits to invest in money market funds, debt securities, U.S. treasuries, government mortgage-backed securities, and other high-quality debt securities in order to earn interest income. Charles Schwab also uses customer deposits to lend to other customers in the form of margin loans or bank loans such as mortgage and home equity lines of credit. If Charles Schwab does not have enough deposits because customers are moving their deposits to money market funds, then Charles Schwab is forced to have more short-term and long-term debts that have much higher funding costs than customers' deposits that pay very low interest. Management stated that the company has around 400 billion of liquidity available to cover 100% of the bank's deposits. In my opinion, I think Charles Schwab's management is mostly right. For example, if you look at this here, you can see Charles Schwab had 321 billion of securities at the end of 2022. This can cover most of the bank's deposits here. Of course, Charles Schwab does not want to sell all these available for sale and held to maturity debt securities because all of them are underwater right now. Selling them would cause Charles Schwab to have huge realized losses. For example, at the end of 2022, these debt securities had nearly 28 billion of unrealized losses. This is huge here. In comparison, Charles Schwab's book value was only around 37 billion at the end of 2022. Also, according to the Wall Street Journal, Charles Schwab's unrealized bond losses as a share of tangible common equity is much larger than other banks, even larger than Bank of America. This is why I think Charles Schwab will do everything it can not to sell its large bond portfolio at realized losses. If Charles Schwab does not have enough liquidity to meet deposit withdrawals, Charles Schwab has the option to use the new bank term funding program created by the Fed. SVB Bank did not have this option before. I think this is a very important lending program because it lets US banks, such as Charles Schwab, borrow loans for up to one year and use any eligible securities such as US Treasuries and government mortgage-backed securities as collaterals at par value instead of market value. 
This means Charles Schwab would not need to sell its 300 billion plus bond portfolio at large realized losses if Charles Schwab does not have enough liquidity. This is very important because SVB Bank was forced to sell its held to maturity bond portfolio at large losses, which of course triggered the bank run. This is why I think Charles Schwab's deposit or liquidity risk is mostly exaggerated. Here's a recent letter from Charles Schwab's founder and CEO. This March alone, we saw a strong influx of core net new client assets of over 53 billion, the second highest March results in our history. The diversity of our business remains a strength. For example, our trading and wealth management businesses experienced a very strong first quarter. Deposit flows at Swap Bank have remained fairly consistent during this terminless period. In fact, adjusting for moderately increased cash movements during the week last month, following national concerns about regional bank stability, the average daily outflows were below February. Of course, the Fed's actions to decrease the money supply and raise interest rates will naturally increase our cost of funding and consequently have some impact on earnings, but that higher cost of funding will begin to decrease. Which combined with natural growth in our business and lower expenses, we will eventually begin to enjoy growth in earnings. At the time of making this video, Q1 earnings are not out yet, so I'll show you this here. Charles Schwab had core net new client assets of over $53 billion during the peak of the banking crisis in March. This is still higher than the previous month. Again, I think this suggests that Charles Schwab is slightly gaining more brokerage customers and more assets from customers. Of course, not everything is perfect for Charles Schwab, even if Charles Schwab has enough liquidity to cover 100% of customer deposits. I think Charles Schwab mismanaged its very large $300 billion plus bond portfolio, consisting of every for sell securities and held to maturity securities. Similar to many US banks, Charles Ball took on too much interest rate risk and invested too much of customer short-term cash into long-term bonds that are very sensitive to interest rate change. This is why Charles Ball had nearly $28 billion of unrealized losses in its debt securities portfolio at the end of 2022, after the Fed started increasing interest rates aggressively in 2022. I found this reflect while reviewing Charles Ball's annual report. In January and November, of 2022, Charles Schwab decided to move around 109 billion and 80 billion of available for sell securities to held to maturity securities. For example, you look at this here, you can see all of Charles Schwab's debt securities used to be 100% available for sell securities. Now, more than 50% of it is reclassified as held to maturity securities. Based on what I know, this will improve Charles Schwab's earnings and regulatory capital ratios going forward. I think this is a huge loophole because this will allow Charles Schwab to report much smaller unrealized losses in the company's accumulated other comprehensive income going forward if more securities are classified as held to maturity securities. Also, based on what I know, this makes Charles Schwab's capital ratios look better than it is right now. For example, if you look at this here, it appears that all of Charles Schwab's capital ratios are well above the minimum capital requirements. But if Charles Schwab decides to include all the unrealized losses from available for sale and held to maturity securities, these capital ratios will likely be much lower than the minimum capital requirements. I think this is a huge accounting loophole. Here is another red flag. Changes in market interest rates can result in unrealized gains or losses on available for sale securities, which are included in accumulated other comprehensive income. As a Category 3 banking organization, CSC or Charles Schwab has elected to exclude accumulated other comprehensive income from regulatory capital. Management did not include the unrealized losses from available for sale securities. If it did, Charles Schwab's regulatory capital ratios would be much lower. In terms of credit risk, I think Charles Schwab's credit risk is lower than most US banks. This is because Charles Schwab's loan portfolio is much smaller than most US banks. Charles Schwab is still mainly a discount brokerage firm, the largest one in the US, and has a very small banking subsidiary. For example, at the end of 2022, you can see Charles Schwab had bank loans of $40.5 billion. In comparison, Charles Schwab's total assets were approximately $552 billion. Charles Schwab also had $40 billion of cash at the end of 2022. This is more than enough to cover both short term and long term debts. Going forward, I think Charles Schwab will eventually recover. As long as Charles Schwab is not forced to sell its $300 billion plus bond portfolio that is underwater right now. In the short term, over the next several quarters, I think Charles Schwab will likely have much higher funding costs and therefore much lower in net interest margin. This is because customers are moving their money from bank deposits to more money market funds, CDS, and US treasuries that pay much higher yields. 
realistically, once the Fed stops raising interest rates and starts lowering interest rates again, customers will likely move back to cash deposits, which will benefit Charles Schwab, so they can get back into the market to invest in more equities that have more risk than money market funds. This from the most recent FOMC meeting, the Fed expects that its interest rate will peak at around 5.1% this year or peak between 5% and 5.25% this year. Then the Fed expects that they will start lowering interest rates sometime next year, as long as the core PC inflation is coming down toward the 2% inflation target. In terms of consensus revenue estimates, Wall Street analysts expect that Charles Schwab's revenue will decrease slightly year over year in 2023. Again, the biggest reason is that Charles Schwab's funding costs is expected to increase over the next several quarters because customers are withdrawing more deposits to buy money market funds that have much higher yields. I think Charles Schwab's businesses will eventually recover once the Fed stops raising interest rates this year and starts lowering rates sometime next year. This is why you see Charles Schwab's family is expected to grow again over the next two years here. In terms of consensus EPS estimates, Wall Street analysts expect that Charles Schwab's annual EPS will likely drop this year because of higher funding costs, lower net interest margin, lower bank deposits, and possibly lower interest income from its $300 billion plus available for sale and held to maturity debt portfolios that are still underwater right now. Again, once the Fed starts lowering rates, I think Charles Schwab's EPS should start growing again over the next two years. Based on the latest data here, I don't think customers are leaving Charles Schwab. As long as customers are not leaving Charles Schwab, and as long as Charles Schwab is getting more active brokerage accounts and core net new assets every month, Charles Schwab should have higher revenues and EPS over time. I want to show you how to estimate Charles Schwab's intrinsic value here. We're not using a DCF model here to estimate Charles Schwab's intrinsic value because Charles Schwab does not have consistent free cash flow growth. Charles Schwab's business is very cyclical. I think it's almost impossible to predict Charles Schwab's earnings over three years. We're using a price to book valuation model here. I think this works much better for banks and brokerage firms. Charles Schwab's 10 year medium PB is 3.21. In comparison, at the time of making this video, the current PB is much lower at 2.47 because of the current banking crisis. Charles Schwab's latest book value is 36.61 billion. You can update this here once the latest earnings come out. Then we multiply 36.61 billion by 3.21 here. Based on this valuation model, I believe Charles Schwab's intrinsic value should be around 117.5 billion for the entire company, or $62 per share. In comparison, Morningstar gave Charles Schwab a much higher fair intrinsic value at $70 per share. This means I believe Charles Schwab is likely undervalued at the time of making this video. So will I buy Charles Schwab stock? Personally, I won't be buying Charles Schwab stock, even though I think Charles Schwab is likely undervalued at the time of making this video. I think there are much better businesses out there that have much better growth than Charles Schwab and that do not have all the risk I talk about in this video. For example, if you look at my personal growth stock portfolio here, I like to invest in companies such as Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, ASML, Costco, Visa, Mastercard, and American Express. In my opinion, I think these companies have much better business models much lower risk and much higher returns on investor capital. I think these companies are also much better managed. Personally, I like to invest in the best businesses that have great management, large economic modes, great products and services, high return on investor capital, increasing earnings, and increasing free cash flows over time. This is only my personal preference. Generally, I don't like to invest in banking stocks or even brokerage stocks, even if they're undervalued. This is because they always have to take on a lot of risk, such as deposit or liquidity risk, credit risk, and interest rate risk to run their businesses. Now, all these are only my opinions and my analysis based on my research. They are not financial wise. There are always risks associated with investing. You will need to do your own research and do your extra due diligence first before investing in anything. Thank you for watching this video and supporting our channel. This is Victor from the Intelligent Research Channel and I will see you in the next video.